Hey Michelle, good morning. Um, should we just go for a couple of minutes and see if uh, any customer will join? Morning, everyone. We're just waiting for additional minutes to see if any other customer will join. Morning, everyone. We're just Okay, uh, we will start soon. Um, this uh, webinar will be recorded and will be uploaded to the Remedy Force uh, YouTube channel, so you can consult later there. Um, the rec
Hello? Hello? It's okay. Sims is working now. All right. Uh, sorry for the audio difficulties here. So as I was mentioning, uh, what is the email conversation feature? It is a feature that allows your staff members to interact with clients via email. And it works for incidents, service requests, tasks, problems, and change requests. Emails can be received and sent uh, from the console or the activity feed and can be displayed as well on the Remedy for Sale service. So how does it work? The way it works is uh, when a staff is sending an email to a client, uh, the staff goes to Remedy for Sale console or the activity feed. And by clicking on the action menu uh, email, they can go ahead and send an email directly to the client ID uh, of the incident in this case. Uh, so when the console or the Remedy4 sends an email, it goes through your organization-wide address. That can be something like support at mycompany.com. And that arrives to the client mailbox on behalf of your organization-wide address. So what the customer will see, it is something like a notification or like an email coming from support at mycompany.com. The process backwards when the client responds back uh, to that particular email is from the client's mailbox. The client can just hit reply and it goes to the organization wide address or in this case, your company mailbox. After that, it arrives, arrives I'm sorry, to the sales first email service when one of our Apex class is going to process that email, uh, gather the content, it will identify which incident is related to that email and will attach it to the case on Remedy Force. So um, just one thing uh, I should remind you about the webinar. Uh, please, um, you can change the quality of the video to 720p. Uh, by default, it goes to 360p. You can change it to 720 so you can get better quality on audio and video. So that's uh, the way it works. Uh, so we will go ahead and see how to configure that on a brand new Remedy Force, just in case you haven't done that this in the past. So I'm gonna change this and go into my Remedy Force production instance. So there are a couple of things we need to set up first before we go ahead and test everything. Uh, so first we need to set up the uh, email service from Salesforce. So that email service will help us to process the email sent and received. So we go into the setup menu, go here to the quick find search box and type email services. Uh, out of the box, uh, there's um, there's a chance you may have already one email service. Uh, you can use that, but if you don't have any email service, you can create a new one. Or if you just want to create a new email service for testing purposes, you can uh, go for that option as well. So we go and click into a new email service. And I'm going to um, select a name here, conversation. Email conversation I'm going to choose. And this is crucial for the process. We need to choose our, our BMC Remedy for Apex class. And we're, not, we're going to look for email listener. And we're going to select this one, email listener, not email listener test. This email listener class is capable of uh, both uh, two things. Uh, it can create a new incident, but also uh, can attach an email that it's uh, coming from a client to an existing um, to an existing incident or any other object. Uh, from here, uh, it's up to you if you would like to accept attachments. 
I will set uh, to accept all attachments. Also, um, here, uh, this uh, box, accept email from. If you would like to restrict uh, the emails that are arriving to your system from a specific um, domain or a specific email address, you can do this. Like, uh, if you just want to accept the emails from, example, at uh, bmc.com, I can do that, or I can probably just accept email from my specific email address. Just like that. For this uh, demo, I will keep it uh, in blank, but you can just go ahead, come back later and change it. Uh, after that, we can uh, just activate this. Um, if you would like to get failure response settings, you can uh, bounce your the messages um, for any errors. And you can uh, bounce that into any specific uh, email address. It can be your email address or your administrator's email address. And then we can hit save. So now we have our uh, email service created. Uh, from here, I can create multiple email addresses. And this email address, it, it will be the address uh, of the system. Think about uh, this address like the, the address of the Remedy for system. So I'm going to ch choose here um, email conversation address. I will remove this uh, because it comes by default. This is exactly the same setting located at the email service, but this is this only applies for, for this particular email address. So you can have multiple addresses with different accept email from, and that doesn't uh, override the um, configuration for the email service. This is uh, a crucial step here, the context user. Uh, the context user is, um, Basically, the user who is going to be um, creating those uh, emails into the Remedy4 console and attaching them to the incident. So this requires an administrator um, to be selected here. So if you, for some reason, select a staff user or a user with staff profile, uh, when someone sends an email, yeah, it will it will return with an error, and it, the process will fail. So it is recommended here. You select a Remedy Force administrator. Also, it happens that um, when a customer, yeah, it's already um, set up with email conversation, and for some reason they change administrators. Uh, they forgot to change the context user, and they inactive the previous one. So it is recommended to uh, you keep an eye on this and always keep an administrator active here. Uh, okay, for now, let's go ahead and save. And that's it. We have our email service. And this uh, terrific long email address, it's basically the address of the system. So if I go ahead and send an email to this, I can create either an incident or I can attach an email to an existing user. Uh, OK, so that's the first part. So now we need to set up our organization-wide address. Um, what is organization-wide address? The org-wide address, it is a, it's like a short email address for this. Imagine to, to pass this to a client and tell them, hey, you know what? You can send an email to this long address, and an incident will be created or you can create an incident by email this uh, long address. So it's, uh, it's totally a, a mess. Um, so we need to create like a short of this. And that uh, must be something, either a personal email address, or if your company has uh, their own Exchange server, you can create like a mailbox for this, and give it an address, and set up this as the organization-wide email address. Example here, I have a couple of uh, organization while email addresses. Unfortunately, I don't have any Exchange server at the time, so I won't be able to do um, 
have a mailbox here, but uh, I have set a couple of Gmail addresses here. And the only thing you need to do to add either your personal email address or your company's mailbox or email address. Uh, first of all, you need to create it. And after you get the email address, click on the Add button, and you can choose a display name, uh, a similar address. And actually, the, the email address. Uh, I'm going just to pick a dummy one. From here, um, you can restrict the email addresses based on the profiles here. But uh, we, we will do that later uh, on the process. So we will keep this as all profiles to use this email address. And we hit Save. So the reason why you need like uh, access to the mailbox is because to, to the, verify your email address and to verify you um, actually have control of that email address, a verification code will be sent to your mailbox. And you just basically had to grab that email or click on the link and the address will be verified, just as I did with this ones. And that's it. So uh, what what this does, it's um, it, it, it will send the emails on behalf of this email address instead of a Salesforce address or a RemedyForce address. So that will be uh, friendlier for the client. OK, so if we analyze uh, or how does it works, uh, the process when the client sends an email back, it's kind of tricky. It's not like a direct mail to uh, RemedyForce or Salesforce. Remember, we have this email address, right? And the emails are being sent on behalf of this. So when a customer replies back or hit the reply back button, um, the email address will be this one to reply, right? So here, uh, you need to create a forward rule on your Exchange server or on your Office 365, whatever is, is your um, mailbox provider and redirect all incoming email to the long email address that we created. That part of the process, uh, it's when the client replies back, it goes to organization Y address. Here is your company's mailbox. And here's when we need the forward rule. So the forward rule will uh, take any incoming email and it will send it to the Salesforce email service, which it's that uh, long address that we saw previously, this one. Right, so when, when we get that um, email, the Apex class will process the email and will attach it to the case, I mean, to the incident, or it will create a new incident if, it's, if it qualifies for incident email creation. So that's 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 the way it works. So we we have already um, done all the process. The only process left is to configure the forward rule. That is something you must do, and I cannot show you that at the moment um, due to depending on your um, mailbox provider, the process might be different. But you can ask either your Exchange admin or your mailbox admin to create that forward rule, and you just need to pass him or her the e email address. And that's it. OK, so we have uh, done the configuration, the initial configuration for the email service and the org Y address. We can jump now to the Remedy Force Administrator, Administration Panel, I'm sorry, and complete the process. All right, so um, go to Remedy Force Administration and we can go ahead and configure email here and click on email conversation settings. All right, from here we can select the default uh, organization Y address. Um, you see this from address, from email address, I'm sorry. And here we can select one of our uh, organization-wide addresses 
So all uh, coming, uh, all, all emails sent uh, from the Remedy Force console will be sent on behalf of this address. Um, so for testing purposes, I'm going to select this one, BMC Helix Remedy Force. And uh, remember I told you that later we can uh, select uh, to which profiles we apply this. So um, I can select uh, assigned email address to all profiles or assign email address to selected profiles. So if you would like to restrict uh, for a, any profile that you may have, any custom profile, you can do that so. Or if you would like to allow only for staffs and administrators, you can do it just like this. And that's it. Uh, for this um, demo, I'm going to select assigned email address to all profiles and set as default. And below, we will find a couple of um, additional configuration settings um, that we will see in a bit. Um, these are things like the enable the two field for editing, so the staff can add multiple um, addresses into the two field uh, out of the box. Uh, when you hit the email action, you will see uh, it takes the client ID email address into the two field. And if you un uncheck this, this staff won't be able to choose any other address. It will be directly to the client and that's it. As well, we have the option to show the VCC field. Uh, we have the option as well of use uh, email signatures. And this only applies for the activity feed as, as this mentions. Also, uh, we can use email templates that you already have on your system, just in case a staff would like to use a template and just send it away, they can do that. Um, so you have to enable both checkboxes, enable preview of templates. This is only to preview. This is to enable the template field to grab a template. And finally, allow staff members to add additional information in the email sent using templates. And uh, the email template folder is uh, where you have your all email, your email templates. If you are, have created a, a specific folder just for the email conversation, you can select it here. Or if you would like to use all, you can choose the all folder and that will contain all templates. It is uh, important to mention that uh, not all uh, templates are available to use on the email conversation. It's only available for Visual Force templates. So I have, I have seen customers that they would like to use HTML templates. Uh, unfortunately, it's not possible, but Visual Force templates are capable of using uh, HTML code as well. So that, that it's a possibility. Finally, um, every single email conversation um, email that is being sent from the console or the activity feed has the option to include the link to go directly to the record for, for the client and for the staff. You can change the configuration here in case you're using Lighting Experience. In order to those links to work correctly on Lighting, you need to select here Lighting Experience. You can also include the links for Salesforce Classing and Lighting Experience. We will see these links in, uh, when we are going to test or or email conversation. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to test now the conversation uh, from the client perspective. So I already have my client account here. And this is a cell service 3.0. So imagine I'm going, I need to submit a ticket. So I will go ahead and submit a ticket button. Depending on your layout here, we will see a different fields. So I'm going to choose uh, anything. And I'm going to choose a uh, request application access, just a simple test, and I will submit this. All right, so now um, I can see my own ticket created on my activity right here. It's uh, uh, ticket number 62. 
So from my administrator uh, account, should be able to see that on the Remedy Force console now. So here it is. Um, I had the client here. The client, it's tied to an account for this uh, particular test. And it has the category that I choose, uh, applications, and the description that it was, it was mapped into the uh, incident form. But also, um, here in the Actions menu, I'm able to see the Email button. So I can communicate with my client by just go ahead and click on the Actions and by clicking Email. This uh, particular client since is a test client. It has my own uh, email address, but obviously you should see your client's email address here. And I was, since I was mentioning the two fields, it's available to me to edit, so I can add a different uh, email address here. And I can add multiple of them here, right? Or I can add them into the CC or BCC. All those options that we saw on the Remedy Force administration are exactly here. So mm, let's go ahead and see the email once back. Uh, I have the option here to, uh, this is a rich text box. So you can either add images or add uh, hyperlinks, uh, anything like that. We can also have the option for a copy data from the incident and insert it into the actual email body. Example, um, the number, I will, I will grab the number. I'm gonna select copy data from incident fields and then I can right click and see if I can get the number or maybe the account, I'm not sure. Let's see the account, yep, the account is there. So I can just change this and select account. And there it is, I can choose pretty much every single field on the console, swell the client. Remember the client ID will be the username of the client. So there's client email, uh, it's uh, client manager as well. Anyway, um, there's a bunch of options here to pretty much uh, create an email and you don't need to copy info from the console itself. You can just go ahead and right click and select the field you would like to introduce. Um, these are the links that I was talking about. Uh, normally, the, out of the box, both uh, links are created. And this um, says uh, for the Remedy Force user. So this is a staff user. And if I click in here, that will take me directly to the actual console. But I need to have access to the console. Otherwise, it won't work. So I might be a staff or a change manager or an administrator, otherwise it will not work. So you see I'm, I'm, I'm taking directly to the actual record. And that works as well for the client. The only difference is that the client will be uh, taken into the uh, cell service. So the options that I was mentioning on the Remedy Force administration, it's uh, when you're using uh, lighting experience, uh, we need to select this option here, otherwise the links won't work on lighting. So if you have either both uh, users from Classic and Lighting, you can select the option Salesforce Classic and Lighting Experience, and that will create both um, links for a staff on Lighting, a staff on Classic, and a client on Lighting and, and on Classic. So I'm gonna show you that in a sec, uh, it's just right here. And we need to reopen this, uh, let me close, reload this. And hit the email once back. And there it is, I have now a bunch of links there. 
those links can be removed as well. If you don't would like to um, send them out, uh, we can click on the options here and we can uh, remove them. So the next time I, I send an email, the link shouldn't be there. This option it's saved on your cookies. So next time you clean your browser, you might need to select once back this option. But if you would like only to keep the client one, you can keep it just that way and that will work. And the staff one will create like the for lighting and classic and that's it. And okay, I'm gonna just keep it that way. So I'm gonna send, um, I wanna include this time just the record for the client. And I'm gonna send a test message to my client and I'm gonna hit send. Before we check if the email arrived correctly, the activity feed will show us the action. And we will also have the option from sending an email directly from here with uh, exactly the same, same options. Um, as well, we can have the options here to remove the, um, the link of the records. And that's it pretty much. So um, I'm going to reload this record so we can see if the email was attached to the case. Uh, if I go to the details tab, I will see that I have an action here, email sent. And this is the content of the email that I sent, test email conversation. I can click on this and I will open a a tab with the incident history and that contains pretty much the email and all the details. So you see it was sent on behalf of my default organization Y address, so the client won't see that huge address uh, of the email service. So now let me open my mailbox here and let's see if we got the email. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, remember that the actions can be configured on the Remedy Force administration. So you can choose if a, um, if a client can see these actions, like if they can see like email send or email receive or any other note or communication that you have with them, you have the option to configure which actions your, your clients can see. And we will review that in a sec. Uh, so let's see, yep, you got it just right here. So if we check the structure of the actual email, you see first first thing is this the from address. The from address is the org y address as mentioned. But also the subject. The subject contains here the incident number and it has a reference here. A reference here and a reference on the body. So you see that we have like a um a note here and it says do not change the subject line while replying. Why we have this option here or why we have this note, it's because of we need to have this reference in order to attach the answer, the response of this email to the actual incident. So if I go ahead and hit reply, I need to keep this reference number either here on the subject or either on the body, but it's recommended just to keep it on the subject. Otherwise the incident won't be attached to, to, to the actual incident. I'm gonna show you a couple examples. So now I need to, uh, in this case, I don't have a forward rule from this Gmail address to my actual uh, email service. So what I'm going to do to reply, it's I need to grab my huge address here.
and I'm going to reply back uh, as, as as the client, right? So I'm going to hit send, and let's wait for a couple of minutes to see if we get the email attached correctly. All right, so as you can see, we got the email received on the actual action history. And it says my name because um, the way it works is um, it, it gets the email, uh, the email address of uh, the, per the, pe the person who is sending the email, and it compares against the database of users. So if you got um, uh, like multiple users with the same email address, you can, it's going to grab the first one. In this case, this is me because I have multiple email addresses there. All right, so I got the email received there. And if I go to my client perspective view, let me refresh this page. And if I go to the notes tab, I am able to see all the email conversations that we are having. And if I click, I will see all emails there. This is the reply, reply back. And also I'm able to see the attachments. Um, one thing about uh, having uh, any images on the on the signature of an email is that the images will be uh, taken as an attachment. So you see my, my signature had two images. So I got those images into the case as well because my email service is able to take those and attachments and attach it to the case, I mean, to the incident. So um, as a client, I can just reply from here and say, test a uh, note from cell service. If I would like just to do it from here, I can do it from here. And let's go back to the administrator uh, view. I'm going to reload this. And here's a note from the client. You can just click in here and see the actual note. So finally, I just wanted to show you uh, how to make those actions available uh, on on the um, cell service. Out of the box, I think the notes, it's not um, available for your clients, but you can configure that so your clients can see any communication in here and, or they can add, add notes into the incident or any other record they may have. So go to administration side. And we go to Config Application and then Action. So all of these actions uh, are uh, can be communications or any other action on the incident history. Example, we had client note. Uh, we also have the email send and email received. And here in the details, you should see that we have a couple of checkboxes that says enable edit, display in cell service, and high duration. Display in cell service means that the end user or the client can see these communications. So when an email is sent from the console, the actual user should be able to see this on the cell service. So that depends on your um, needs if you would like to make your clients able to see these communications. As well, from the email received, you can select this display on the cell service. And this is a client note. Um, this obviously must be available in display and cell service. So the end user can submit a, a client note just as I did. And to make the notes available, we just go to configure cell service 
incidents and there is a checkbox here that says allow clients to add notes to their incidents if I uncheck that go back to the civil service I am not able to see anymore the communications from the client perspective. So that's that's the way out of the box is, is there. So if you would like to add the notes for your clients on their incidents, you can select this checkbox, hit save, and that will make the notes and communications available to the client. That's it, there you go. All right, well, um, I'm not sure if you have any other questions. We have Diego on the chat, so if you would like to drop any questions in the chat, uh, we can answer from there. Also, you can contact us for any of our support channels on Support Central. You can also contact us on the in-chat um, feature that it's included on the Remedy Force Administration. And just right here. You should have the chat here. Um, if there is anything comes up or you have any issue with the email conversation, you can always submit a case with uh, BMC Helix Remedy Force support team. And we will gladly help you on an, anything comes up. So feel free to ask anything on the chat. Uh, we will stand by for a couple of minutes here. And if there's no questions, we will end the webinar. Thank you so much uh, for joining with us.